do not sell your NFT before checking its rarity level. Because if you do not check, you might end up selling your NFT for much less than it's worth. Because when it comes to NFTs within a project, not all of them are created equally. Let's take a look at pudgy penguins, for example. Let's say we have a pudgy penguin and we head over to OpenSea. We'll see that the floor price is 2.8 Ethereum. This is the cheapest price right now for a pudgy penguin. And the cheapest price, the floor price, are typically for NFTs within a project that are not rare. So if you have a rare NFT, a rare pudgy penguin, you don't wanna sell it at the floor price. Another example, let's say we have a cool cat and the floor price is 1.6. This is the cheapest price for the NFTs in the project that are typically the least rare. And the best example I think to understand rarity is to take a look at CryptoPunks. There are 10,000 CryptoPunks. They are all similar but in the end of the day, they are unique. And the six CryptoPunks that have sold for millions of dollars are either aliens, apes, or zombies. And if we look at the rarity level, there's only nine alien punks out of 10,000. When it comes to the apes, 24 out of 10,000. And when it comes to the zombies, 88 out of 10,000. And in order to check the rarity of your NFT, head over to raritytools.com. I will leave a link for it in the description down below. And you'll go over here to all collections and you can search for your project. We'll take a look at Board Ape Yacht Club, for example. So here we are with Board Ape Yacht Club and we can rank it by rarity in order. The most rare, uh, the most rare Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs from one to 10,000. And we'll see the floor price is 14.25 Ethereum right now in the market. So if you own a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT that is very rare, right? Number one, number two, or number three, and so on, you probably do not want to sell it at the floor price. And when you click on these NFTs, it will show you the rarity levels by characteristics or traits. And every NFT project will be a bit different since they all have different traits and different characteristics. So if we look at this score for this Bored Ape Yacht Club, this is rarity rank number three. We can see, for example, its mouth, bored, unshaven pizza. There's only 26 of these out of 10,000. If we scroll down and we see, for example, its eyes are wide-eyed. There's only 549 of these out of 10,000. And in order to look for the rarity of your specific NFT, there are two ways. The first way is you can just search for it. So let's say you're on OpenSea or you have a specific NFT, you can look for it. So this is Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT 1080. We can come to the search bar and look it up. And we'll see that out of 10,000 NFTs, this one is 9,431. So this is not that rare. If this were to sell, it would sell closer to the floor price. Let's take another example with long neck ladies. So there's 3,333 of these NFTs sorted by rarity, the cheapest floor price 0.27. You can also connect your wallet. So if you go over here to my wallet and you connect it, which I did for this video with one of my test wallets, we'll see this NFT right over here. And out of 3,333, this is 3,225. So this is not very rare. So if I were to sell this, it would be closer to the floor price. Now this video isn't going to tell you what you should sell your NFT for, but more of a focus on what you probably should not sell it for. If you have an NFT within a project that is rare, you probably want to avoid the floor price. But in terms of actually pricing your NFT, that is in the end of the day up to you. And also it matters how fast you want to sell it, right? Because NFTs are not very liquid. You might list it for sale and it might sit there for days, weeks, or even months. So let's take, for example, the Doge Pound. There are 10,000 Doge Pound NFTs, floor price 0.78. And these are the most rare Doge Pound NFTs. So anyone holding these probably does not want to sell them in a bull market at the floor price. But if we take a look at this one over here, number 14, you can click on these NFTs on Rarity Tools and you can then view it on OpenSea. So if we head over to OpenSea, we'll see that this one is listed for 36.69 Ethereum, $118,000 worth of Ethereum. The problem is no one is going to buy this, at least as I'm making this video, because if we look through the history, 
we can see there never was a sale and the highest offer right now is not even one Ethereum. So just because you have a rare NFT and you set it at a high price, it doesn't mean that it is going to be bought up right away. So I wanna repeat again, the goal here is not to tell you what you should sell it for, but more what you should not sell it for. You have something rare, you probably do not want to lowball yourself and sell it at the floor price. And everything we're speaking about in this video is typically how it works during a bull market. During a bull market, you'll have rare NFTs that will sell and super rare NFTs that will sell. But during bearish times, people don't want NFTs in general. They're not even buying to begin with. So during very bearish times, people are generally looking, if they're even looking for NFTs, for the lowest price NFTs or for the most rare NFTs at an affordable price. And when I say rare, I truly mean the most rare, the top 10 or the top 20. So during bearish times, if people are looking to buy, they either want the cheapest price NFTs or they want the most rare NFTs. So if you're holding something that is rare, but not the most rare, during bearish times, you'll have two options. Either you can hold on to it to see maybe if the markets come back. Of course, there's a risk that the market doesn't come back. Or if you really need to get it out of your hands right away and sell it, even if it's rare and it's bearish times, you may have to sell it closer to the floor price. But if we're in bull times, right, bullish markets, and you have something rare, you probably do want to avoid the floor price. Now, this video is focusing on the rarity. But if you want to even determine if there's demand for your NFT to begin with, go ahead and watch this video link right above and in the description down below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.